I want to meet Professor Murad. He won his Nobel Prize for nitric oxide. He proved that little gas molecule is a very important messenger of cellular signaling. I'm studying autonomic nervous system impairments. These patients have a very low life expectancy, and I'm wondering if we can change that. I want to ask Farid Murad if we can develop a more specific drug for these autonomic impairments, if we can target the nitric oxide so we don't have that many, many side effects from the usual drugs that are used in the autonomic impairments. You have to be so proud of it. Just well, that I'm little not. guess, that I'm, little I'm thing. I'm proud, uh, but I'm also impatient. You know, I, I have a big laboratory because I like to see results every day. You presented a very interesting movie yesterday. Do you think that's very important to educate kids, to push them? After the Nobel Prize was announced in October 1998, my office got lots of phone calls from the schools and colleges and universities. Everybody was calling so I could talk to the young people. So I went to the television department in the Texas Medical Center, and I said, will you help me make a video? What? You don't know what the Nobel Prize is? We're going to have to do something about that. Whoa! Hey, the dude's coming out of the TV. <laughs> you get a gold medal, and then, of course, there's the money. Money? Money. Loyalty? Yeah. Did you ever imagine that it would be so important? Well, initially, no. Initially, I knew it was important because that's how nitroglycerin works, and that was exciting to figure out. And then a few years later, we realized it did lots of other things. And now it's just incredible. <clears throat> There are now probably 130,000 publications on nitrogen. Yeah, because I've looked on PubMed and there are so uh, many of them. How many did you find? A lot, a lot of patients. I think pages, and just the reviews. That's right. There are lots. Um, but there are applications now for wound healing, mm -hmm. uh, burns. Yeah. Uh, septic shock, you, you mentioned yesterday about septic shock. Septic shock, if you inhibit the production. Exactly. There are studies with hemolytic hypotension and septic mm -hmm. shock. There will be applications in inflammatory disease, atherosclerosis. Mm -hmm. There are just lots of possibilities. How do you choose? There are so many applications for <clears throat> nitric oxide. How do you choose between them? We always work on something that no one else has done, because oh, okay. that's the fun part. That's the rule. <laughs> if it's been done, you know, someone else can do it. Uh, if it hasn't been done, then I become very interested and think about it and think about it. And then to work on it really takes the right trainee to join me, somebody who is also interested, and we try to work on it. Now it may take three years, five years, ten years to solve the problems, but that's okay. I finished medical school. I did a year of neurology. I'm a resident in neurology, and then I moved to Germany. Where in Germany? Uh, in Erlangen, Erlangen Nuremberg at the university. We are trying to see if different diseases uh, that affect the autonomic nervous system have an influence on the life expectancy, um, and it, they do. We have a big study on traumatic brain injury, and we actually found out that it doesn't matter if the trauma is big or small, it's the autonomic nervous system is affected, then the life expectancy goes really low. We know that with brain injury, with or subarachnoid bleeds, berry aneurysms that bleed into the cerebral spinal fluid, that the blood gets hemolyzed, releases hemoglobin. The hemoglobin sucks up the nitric oxide from the blood vessels, and the blood vessels will constrict. Usually five, six, seven days later, they develop confusion because of compromised blood flow. Yeah, exactly. I think I know how a way to treat that. 
I've never done it, but I think it'll work. Okay. Yeah, because we had a lot of problems with um, hemorrhagic stroke. And you usually you have to be very careful not to right. do spasm. And we have calcium blockers, but they're not that efficient. And you have to be very careful with the dose. And I think the way to treat is maybe we'll put Viagra in the brain to uh, open up the blood vessels. <laughs> OK. <laughs> A scientific sensation sweeps the globe. Nitric oxide is everywhere. This common and toxic pollutant depletes the ozone layer. It's even found in car exhaust and cigarette smoke. But nitric oxide is also found inside the human body and could help send very important messages. Nitric oxide at high concentrations can be toxic. This is true of all messenger molecules in the body. You want it to have the right amount at the right time. If you have too little, there's a problem. If you have too much, there's a problem. Nitric oxide comes out of chimneys and smokestacks and automobile exhaust. And it's a pollutant. It's toxic. But at the right concentration, it's very, very useful. Today we talked about being a responsible scientist. Do you feel responsible on the directions that nitric oxide can, can lead to or other scientists can do with it? Uh, I think one of the concerns that I have is because nitric oxide does th so many things, <clears throat> is it going to be specific? Uh, that's what I wanted to ask. Okay. Well, I think you can work with specificity because there's so many enzymes and isoforms of the enzyme mm -hmm. in the pathway. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we can come up with compounds that are selective for one isoform or another. Mm -hmm. And based on the distribution of those isoforms and tissues, we can begin to get a feel for specificity. We can also control the route of delivery. Inhalation mm -hmm. gets different effects than the intravenous or oral, right? So there are all sorts of ways to play games. Mm -hmm. I know you worked a lot in industry and in drug development. Do you see a future for nitric oxide? I think that probably every big multinational pharmaceutical company has projects mm -hmm. related to nitric oxide. And there are many, many startup biotechs all over the world. Mm -hmm. How many? I don't know. Maybe 60 or 70, lots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're all looking at different aspects. Uh, I can tell you that you know the inhalation of nitric oxide for premature babies with pulmonary hypertension, and now they're beginning to use, in, in addition to nitric oxide, phosphodiesterase inhibitors like Viagra. To so enhance a little Viagra the, enhances uh -huh, the effects uh -huh, of NO. Exactly. Uh, there'll be some other drugs coming along as well. Why right? did you give up industry? Uh, I felt that I didn't belong in industry. Uh, I didn't agree with my superiors. They weren't scientists. That's uh, I'm a scientist. Uh, I couldn't argue with them. In industry, you don't argue with your boss. You just follow. <laughs> you just follow. And I don't follow. I, I do what I want to do, and I argue what I have to argue. Does this competition still drives you? Still? Oh, sure. Yeah? Is it? Is it a motivation? <clears throat> yes. <laughs> because I think competition is very healthy. Do you? I, I'm very exactly the healthy. opposite because uh, my parents, they were very, not strict, but they always wanted me to be the first, to be the best I can be. And I just, at one point, I just started hating competitions. My parents gave me a lot of freedom to do whatever mm -hmm. I wanted. Mm -hmm. I think competition is great, provided you win. <laughs> you know. My parents, I think, were hoping that I would go home and practice medicine. And I told them, no, I'm going to become a professor and do research. And I think they were disappointed. And I thought, how do I respond? And I said, if I go home and practice medicine in my lifetime, maybe I can take care of two or 3,000 people, maybe, help them. If I go into research and I'm really lucky and do something important, I can help a lot more. I think the advice I would offer to anyone is to figure out what it is that you want to do. You know, set your goals and then go for it. And be sure that you're going to enjoy doing what you're going to do. I did a year of clinical work and now I'm doing research and I'm just wondering what I'm going to do next year because I think research is a little bit more hard. You have to look for fellowships, for stipends, for... It's crazy. Well, I can assure you that good people will always have opportunities. Do you think it's possible to do clinical practice and research, to combine them? Well, that was my goal initially, was to do both, plus two. teaching. However, I learned that to be the best doctor, you have to do 
clinical medicine most of the time. To be the best scientist, you have to do research most of the time. To do both and be outstanding with both is probably not possible. Why? (laughs) Because if if you're a little bit of a doctor or you're a little bit of a scientist, you're not going to get patient referrals. You're going to make mistakes. Uh, and you're going to have difficulty getting grants as a researcher. So you do have to choose. Oh. Well, I understand. You know, I Can love you clinical medicine. Too? What I do is I find collaborators mm-hmm. to do the clinical work. Mm-hmm. So I'm still part of it, mm-hmm. but someone else is really doing most of the work. So basically, I have to, cho- to make a choice? I think so. I'm you surprised that there's so many students here at Lindau who are still trying to figure out what to do, well, including yourself. <laughs> I know. I'm a little bit disappointed, but I'm not going to give it up. I'm going to try to do both clinical um, and clinical practice and research. I'm going to try. It's going to be hard, but let's just see. And she's got to decide whether it's going to be clinical medicine or research. I think she's interested in the combination, but that's a difficult thing to do today. He had some wonderful ideas that nitric oxide can be very useful in patients with autonomic dysfunctions, that new drugs can be, can be developed for these patients. So yeah, it was wonderful. And I also learned a new thing about uh, me, about myself, that uh, I don't have to be that shy, that I can talk to a Nobel laureate and enjoy it. And yeah, have a wonderful time. <laughs>